once there was a, a boy, he came over to me, he made a bet with a different guy, a different boy in the yeshiva. Uh, I think it was about, if he doesn't wake up for shahrit, first, he's going to spill water on him. If he doesn't, if the other guy doesn't wake up, he's going to spill water, water on him. And there was a mahlukit, who got up first. Bottom line, they, this guy threw water on this other kid. And the kid came down to my uh, office all angry and upset. Wasn't true. This is disgusting. This, how could this be? How could this guy do this to me? And I told him, you know, first of all, it was a she'ira. It wasn't so peshut. It was simple. Who, who was right or wrong? But I told him, let me ask you a question. <coughs> Every night, this guy was a little uh, wild. And every night, he used to bang on the doors at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, play pranks on everyone, and make jokes. And I told him, let me ask you, when you make these jokes and you wake people up at night, what do you say about that? Was that, is that OK? Could be you were right this time. It's very possible. I'm not going to get in, in, into that point. But what, do you, what about every night when you wake people up and bother people. All of a sudden, he had nothing to say. He put his head down, left the office. <laughs> That's it. That's right. What's the difference? Why, when someone did something to him that he felt was wrong, he got all up, he got all crazy, he goes bothered. This can't be, where's the justice? But when he was every night, <laughs> Making problems, that was okay. How does that work? If he's a man of justice, he likes everything to be the fiat deen. So it should be both ways. One has to do with him also should be man of justice. If he doesn't care about justice, so what's the difference? So a so guy just made a joke, played a, played a prank on you, let's just say. So chill out, take it easy, what's the problem? The explanation is simple, that a person is always biased to himself. He sees what's good for him. But whatever he's comfortable, it's OK, even if he bothers others. But when people bother him, then it's a whole different story. It's a teva, it's a nature, that a person only sees by him what's right. What is the biggest musar? What is the best way to give someone musar? If you want somebody to wake up about something. You have to give them an example of someone else that did such a, a thing. And then he'll probably say, wow, this guy is terrible. I can't believe a person could do that. And then some way, bring it around and show him that this is the exact same thing that he was doing. Then he'll, he'll get it. But when you put, talk to a person straight, a lot of times he doesn't understand. He doesn't even feel that he's doing anything wrong. He'll protect himself all the time. I'll give you another mashal. Somebody was mentioned about how to teach Gemara. So let's just say there's a mahlukit in the Gemara between the buyer and the seller. OK, the buyer says, he never sold it, he, never, he, he, he bought it. Seller says, I never sold it to you. The guy is learning Gemara, he says, I can't understand this buyer. How could it be that he would say such something so stupid like that? Of course the seller is right, 100%. It makes no sense. The buyer is wrong, and the seller is right. So now how do you explain the guy to Gemara? You tell him, okay, let's... Do mashal, for exa example. Let's just say you were the buyer, and this uh, Ruven was the seller. OK? And he told him the same story again, same exact Gemara. But now, in the, in the explanation, he's the buyer. After he explained it to him, he says, oh, I understand now. Now, now I understand better. Why? Because now he's, he's the buyer. So now he has sympathy for himself. He starts understanding what is the other side of the coin. We always look at ourselves 
like we are perfect, we're right, and the other side is wrong, and we are not even able to accept the other side. This is the, the nature of the person. <clears throat> this is just one more story that happened to me one time. I, uh, there's a shul I pray in my, next to my house. I went there one Motzei Shabbat to, uh, to make a, I wanted to pray to make a minyan, and uh, some guy was learning in the back. So I got a few guys together. He starts screaming at me. He tells me, you don't see I'm learning here? You don't see that this is a place of learning? What are you trying to make a minyan now? Are you are bothering us? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I thought to make a minyan him over here. OK. I went to the different, a different room. I made a minyan over there. A few weeks later, I see the same guy organizing a minyan to pray Arvit. And there was a shi'ur kabuah, there was a set shi'ur, a few old men sitting and learning in the back. And they told him, listen, we're, we're, we're learning over here. So the guy tells him, this is a place to pray over here. You want to learn, go learn somewhere else. Because we're praying over here now. You don't see we're praying, Does you want to learn, go to the other room. And I was laughing to myself and I said, look how exactly opposite, the person, opposite, the person sees what's good for him. He sees that he's right. And this was the Musar, of course, that the Midrash says, very big Musar that Yosef gave his brothers, Oilanum Yom Adin, Oilanum Yom that Yosef told him to his brothers, Haodavi Hai, is my brother is, is my father still alive? Now you're worried about Yaakov Avinu that you're going to lose Binyamin, he's gonna suffer. How come you weren't worried? 22 years ago when he sold me. This is the biggest Musar possible. Why? Because they felt all the time they were okay, and all of a sudden they get the smack in the face and they say, wow, how can this be? Can't be. We always have to, when we want to strengthen ourselves, we always have to have that power of looking at the other side. It's very hard, it's very hard. But if a person wants to fix himself, he has to always say to himself, okay, what would be if the case was the opposite? If I was in the other person's shoes, how would I feel? Would I accept that or I feel differently? If not, we don't see the problem at all. The hardest part is when we live our lives in a certain way and we're sure we're okay, we're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm a great guy. I put on tefillin every day, Shomer Shabbat. I go to pray. How scary is it going to be when all of a sudden all of this blows up in our face and we say, wow, you know, look, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. They have so many things to do. And this is what's going to happen in the Shemaim when we say, it says, Oilanum yom adin, oilanum yom What is first, when a person, first of all, he has to come to, the, to court. What do they do first? They tell him, okay, what did you, they rebuke him. What did you do wrong? Is it okay what you did? It's wrong what you did? And they check him out. After that, they give the Pesach Deen. What is the Pesach? Hayav or Patur. But what's first? The Tokicha. First is the Tokicha. And then is the judgment. <coughs> first they hear the, the court case, the different sides. And then they give the Pesach. But we say, Oilan um yom haddin. Woe is to us from the day of judgment. Woe is to us from the day of rebuke. It's opposite. So it says, how does a Kadosh Baruch Hu judge a person when he comes to the Shamaim? If he's going to just judge him according to himself, he's going to say, well, you know, I had this issue, I had that issue, I had this reason, that reason. He has excuses for everything. So what does the Kedush Baruch Hu do? He says, let's go judge Reuven. Let's see about Reuven. What do you say about Reuven? And he brings the same scenario that he has to be judged on. He says, this guy Reuven, Hayav Mita, this guy, he should be in Gainam for, for the next uh, 20 years. It's not even enough for this guy. And then after that, Kadosh Baruch Hu just tells him, you're the guy. Oh, now it's a problem. Now because he sees things differently. Uh, so that's what we say, Oilanum Yom Adin, 
first the person makes a judgment for someone else. After that, Kadosh Baruch Hu gives him the tochicha, he tells him, you did the same thing. This is our avodah, this is our work, that we have to be able to come out of ourselves, come out of a shell, to always be able to see the other side, to see if what we're doing is right. Believe it or not, we could be living in a long way, in the wrong way, just like the Shivatim were, were, were living in a wrong mahshava, wrong thought for 22 years. We could also. What do we say? Well, that's what everyone does. That, that's that's a normal. This, this is life. Could be everybody's wrong also. You don't know. We have to stop to think. The way I'm living, what am I doing? It's right or it's wrong? We have to make for ourselves a tochicha by seeing if, what would we say if somebody else it was the case with someone else. And this is the tochicha, this was the rebuke that Yosef at Sadiq gave to his brothers, and they had nothing to say. When it finally hits someone in the face strong, we are mitorer, we wake, wake up, and a day earlier is always better than a day later. So we should always think about how could we fix ourselves, how would we want someone to treat us, how would we look at someone else if he did this? Let's give you, I'm sorry, last, last thing I just remember from Rabbi Ben David. He said, we know the famous Mishnah, Im anidi midi. If a person doesn't take care of himself, who's going to take care of him? But he said a different pirush. Different, he says, Im anidi, if a person doesn't look at himself, midi. He says, who's, who's, who's this other guy? Why do we talk about other people all the time? We say, oh, this guy is, has an anger problem. This guy is, is a show-off. This guy is this. This guy. Why? Because we don't look at ourselves. But if a person looks at themselves and says to himself, well, how many things I have to fix, he won't feel so free to talk about other people. Before he talks about other people, he'll fix himself. As that we should be to fix all of our midot and become whole people.